white papers, we just use chlorine and bleach. On the concrete, I just use chlorine diluted to prep it. Macro stone fabricate, we've got a couple of options. Remember, any subject has been down longer than a month, you're always going to have oils on the surface. You may have to degrease them also. And that's using this total plane product, which is sitting out front there. This is a high concentrated degreaser that can be cut up to 10 times. So one gallon can make up to 10 gallons. It depends on how much you are trying to remove. If it's a pool deck, 10 to 1 solution is all you need. If it's dry, well, you may want to go 5 to 1 because you have more oil on the surface trying to remove. If you have drip marks, so just ponding oil, you may want to go 1 to 1, 50 50, and go forth concentrated. You may want to use hot water with the pressure washer, not just cold. Remember, hot water is going to deep clean. We all done laundry before. You got a t-shirt or clothes that are dirty. What comes cleaner than a wash? Cold water wash or warm water wash? Your clothes get much cleaner when you use warm and hot water. Same with the surface of the tree. This one, I'm going to just kind of play the tree for you. You always want to add water first in the product you want. What's going to happen if you add the product in first? And Add the water to it, it's going to foam up. So, water first, then the cloth. And you can degrease the surface. Again, stiff brim, soft brim, depends on what you're trying to do. You don't want to work. Let off lightly. Again, I would use a pressure washer, I would soft wash it, or I would use my pressure washer, but I'd stand up a little higher. I wouldn't get as close to the surface. Meaning, your pressure washers don't go on here like this. Stand up, away from the surface, and you're not damaging the top part of the substrate. The substrate you're playing the tree. Now, on travertine, what we're going to do is another product to prep travertine. We're finding a lot of new homes are still putting in a lot of travertine on food bags, patio, banai. The problem with travertine is there's two problems. One, it's very dense. It may, it may be soft, it took two million years to create uh, mountains of return to the of Mexico. It's calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate takes a couple million years to create that surface. The problem is, Play these things, come out of twinkle, it tends to be slippery the very first couple of feet. So the biggest complaint of travertine is not that it doesn't look good. They like they like the looks, they like the, the integrity of the, the, the overall surface that you have, it's cooler, it's very attractive, but it's slippery. So what we find, what we're finding with a lot of new builds, home buildings, is you're profiling the surface to take away the complaint in the lawsuits that the travertine is caused over. So what they're doing is using a very fine medium, and they're sandblasting. So what they're doing is marble, travertine, stones, those type of surfaces, because they want to keep putting them on outside, they're meant for inside. They were not meant for outside. The only way they're meant for outside is if you can profile the surface. There's another good advantage of profile. Not only does it take away the hot skid, it also allows any kind of penetrating sealer and pregnator to get into the surface. Again, the longevity, any of these products that we're, we're showing you today, whether it's the water shield or the stone shell, is it has to penetrate. If it doesn't penetrate, then it's not going to last long. If it penetrates, then you're going to get the longevity, the durability, and it's going to beat water, stain resistance, all those good things. So here we're going to use a product called Total Etching. On etching clean, I'm going to go full spring. This is what we just used a minute ago. That would remove efflorescence. That's what we did just to, to, to prep the pavers. That'll also pull out any kind of efflorescence in the stone. Uh, but keep in mind, when you're using a non-film forming sealer, if efflorescence is still inside the stone, it can come through. It will not get trapped. Film formers, you have to treat them because they get trapped underneath the film. Does that make sense, guys? So this is meant more for film forming surfaces. It can be used on natural stone. It can be used on travertine to help prep and condition. It will help remove contaminants, not just efflorescence. Rust stains, dirt, dust from the saw when you cut with you know, the tile saw, if you're cutting and installing, you have that film of dust. It's a great tool to remove all that light foreign matter.
but because it is an impregnated breeze, if there's anything trapped underneath, it can come through the surface, and now you can treat it with this afterwards without hurting the treatment that you put down. Okay. This one is called etching plate. We're going to put this on the fabric team. And again, when you apply chemicals, you typically like to lightly re dampen the area before you apply the chemical. One big reason. Big reason why you want to uh, dampen the surface before you treat the chemical is you get even dispersion of that chemical. Put it on a dry surface, it's hot out, it's going to want to suck in and absorb more chemical in one spot and not be evenly displayed. So, you like to typically dampen it first before you apply to get that complete even dispersion of, of chemical. Uh, I do the etching plate, you can cut this one to one with water. The travertine, because it's so dense and this has not been sandblasted, I've got to profile it, try to make it less slippery, and also open up the pores. So, when I put the impregnator under, I got some. Ability to get it to absorb in. Again, the more it absorbs, the longer it's going to last. Yeah, this is a dead <laughs> bottle, guys. Not the prop. That's for show. This is for the dough. Great. Now, I would not use this product typically on natural stone. Because it's already porous and soft. You want to let that sit on the surface about 10 to 15 minutes. When you're doing a pool deck, a patio, or an eye, do it in sections. That way you engage the profile and not let it get away from you. So basically, if I got a pool deck, I'll do it in four quadrants and just do one section at a time. So if I got four quadrants, I start the far left corner, back around, and break it in. Minutes over there, and this big something falls back, and start soft washing off the material. You want to make sure when you soft wash, wash thoroughly. Any residual chemical left behind is going to have an effect on how the impregnator takes it to the surface. All right, hope that answers your questions, guys. Got anything to put onto that? So, 10 to 15 minutes, full strength on traffic heat. Not necessary to use on soft stone like this. You know, if, it, if it's very, very dense stone. That's where the etch comes in, etch and clean. The other good thing about etching clean, what makes it kind of a unique product is, is it's called clean acid. So it's usable in LA. So it, it meets all the VOC requirements. So it doesn't have a fume. We're not breathing any of that coming in. It smells kind of like a sweet Kool-Aid. But it's also removing mold and algae spores. It's also removing light oil. So if you have a pool deck, you've got suntan lotion, you've got foot oil, it's removing that. You have mold and algae is removing that, and it's etching and profiling the surface all in one. The one product does all three things. So it'll just take, take like 10 minutes later, again, soft washing. You see some of this decorative concrete we did, we did the other day? Some of the urushades here, the make boards back here in the stamp concrete, done also with the urushades back and back. So, again, going over prep concrete typically, all you got to do is move oils with, with the total clean, which is the degreaser. Just this one can be diluted anywhere up to 10 to 1, depending on what you're trying to remove. Heavy oils 50 50, driveway maybe 5 to 1, a full deck 10 to 1. Trying to remove the condition for efflorescence, rust stain, tannic stains, you want to use the total prep. That one's going to help remove any of the efflorescence, dirt, rust. It's going to fizzle. If it fizzles, that means it's doing something. If it doesn't fizzle, just don't use it. It's like peroxide on a wound. Put peroxide on a wound, it's not fizzling. Your wound's already clean. So there's no use to do this. I always suggest doing a test area when you go off and get a job. So, first of all, if it's paper, if it's stone, you can do a little test area for. Two reasons. One, to see what you got to use to prep it with. So if you bid the job, you already know going in, you get the getting prepped so that you bid it. And two, when you're done, you can show the consumer, whether it's a condominium, commercial project, or a homeowner, you can show the end user what it's going to look like when you're finished. So there's, as one guy told us at one of our classes, um, your expectations are not the same as the customer's expectations. They're always going to be different. So start thinking of expectations. 
why wait to the end of the job to find out that that's not what they wanted? You can show it to them up front, do a test area, make sure the seed is going to take. It's going to give you the right look, pick the right one. It eliminates 99.9% .9 at the end of the job, right? That's total prep. You see what I just did over here, the travertine, the etching clean. That's going to do all three things, mold, algae, and profile the surface. Most commonly used on travertine, garage floors where you don't want no fumes. When you open that up, it smells like cooling. If you take acid, open it up. Do that. I would have no nose hair. My brain cells would be gone. So it might be like some of my competitors. 